Hi, and welcome back. Today we're going to do a problem about the four fundamental subspaces. So here we have a matrix, B. B is written as the product of a lower triangular matrix and an upper triangular matrix. And we're going to find a basis for and compute the dimension of each of the four fundamental subspaces of B. Now I'll give you a minute to try that on your own, to hit pause, and then I'll be right back in just a minute and we can do it together. OK, we're, we're back. Now, the first thing to notice is that uh, B, that is that this is an LU decomposition of B. So we have L here and U here. Now, let's go one space at a time. Let's start with the column space. And first, let's just say what the dimension of the column space is. OK, so let's look at our U matrix. How many pivots do we have? We have two pivots. So the column space has dimension 2. This is the number of pivots. Good. Now, how do we uh, find a basis for the column space? Um, how do we find that, that uh, basis? Well, in lecture, Professor Strang had uh, started with a matrix B. He did elimination on it, and then he took the pivot columns in the original matrix. And that's great. That works. You can also take the pivot columns in the L matrix. You, you can see by multiplying this, this out that it will amount to essentially the same thing. So a basis for this column space, I can just take these these two pivot columns of my L matrix, 1, 2, minus 1, and 0, 1, 0. Good. OK. So there's a, the dimension of and a basis for the column space of B. OK. Next, let's do the null space together. OK, what's the dimension of the null space? Well, the dimension of the null space is always the number of columns minus the number of pivots. right? It's the number of free variables. So here, that's just 1. Good. And how do we find this one vector in the uh, null space? Well. Well, what we do, right, is we can just plug in 1 for our free variable, and we can back solve to get the other 2. So this equation tells me that my second number is negative 1, and this equation tells me that that third variable is negative 3 fifths, if I can fit it in here. That's a negative 3 fifths if, you, if, if it's difficult to see that on the uh, tape. OK, now let's move on next to the row space. OK, so next is the row space. So how do we find the dimension of the row space. I'm going to write row space as column space of B transpose. How do we find that? Well, well, remember that one of our big facts in this class is that the dimension of the row space is the same as the dimension of the column space. It's just the number of pivots. So that's good. So it's 2. OK, and how do we find a basis for the uh, row space? Well, there are a couple ways of thinking about this. One way of thinking about it is we got this upper triangular matrix from B by doing elimination. And elimination doesn't change the uh, row space. So I can just use the two pivot rows 
of the uh, matrix U. Good. So uh, basis for my row space here uh, is I just put these two pivot rows. Those put I, I just put those together and I get a basis for this row space. Okay. The last one is always the toughest and the trickiest. We have to do the left null space or the null space of B transpose. Okay. So first let's compute its dimension. What's the dimension of this left null space? Okay. Well, there's a similar formula to, com to uh, the one we used when we were computing the dimension of the null space. It's just the number of rows minus the number of pivots. So there are three rows. Our matrix is three by three. And there are two pivots. So this is just one dimensional again. Now, um, we need to compute now um, this left null space. So let me, let me go, go back to our original matrix. The way to uh, do this is to take b equals lu and invert l and get eb equals u. So we, we need to move l over to the left-hand side. OK. And if we do that, um, I'm just going to write that down here. So what's the inverse of the L matrix? We just get 1, negative 2, 1, 0, 1, 1 times B uh, is our U matrix, this upper triangular matrix. Um, OK. And now, now that I've moved L over to the other side, I can read off my uh, the vectors in my left null space. Now, I'm looking at not my pivot variables, but my free variables, because it's some sort of null space. But I want to look at this E matrix. So the third row of this E matrix. The uh, third row corresponds to the free row here. And when I multiply this by B, I just get zeros. So this is in the left null space. So uh, a basis for this left null space is, see if I can fit it here, just this 1, 0, 1. Good. OK, so we've found the dimension and, uh, of and basis for all of the four fundamental subspaces. Before I move on, I just want to recall which of the L matrix or the U matrix we used for each of these subspaces. So for the column space, we used columns, the uh, pivot columns of the L matrix. For the null space, we looked at the U matrix. For the row space, we also looked at the U matrix. And for the left null space, we needed to invert the L matrix and look at the uh, free row. OK, now, the last thing, I mean, we're done with the problem, but the last thing that's useful is to draw a picture, which I have right here. I know in lecture, Professor Strang has drawn you some sort of cartoon pictures of what these subspaces look like. But here, I want to try to actually draw them in a special case. So if you can read my drawing here, um, what do we have? So we have um, the, the uh, row space here and the null space here, right? And so B maps this this picture into this picture. The null space here, 
all the scalar multiples of this vector all go to 0, because they're in the uh, null space. That's exactly what b takes to 0. b takes everything else, including the row space, into this column space. OK. And what does b transpose do? Well, b transpose kills this left null space, kills this vector, and it takes everything else into the row space, into the column space of b, b transpose. Okay. Uh, thanks for doing this exercise together. I hope this picture is helpful. <laughs>